I notice my heart beating. Um, and like a calmness and a lightness uh, looking at you right now. I'm wondering if you're feeling anything. Um, feeling fresh. Fresh. In my face. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the rest of my body feels really warm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I noticed maybe like a little bit of glimmering, like shininess in your eyes. And maybe a couple times it was like uh, maybe like trying to laugh or maybe it seemed almost like an unsureness in your face or something. Mm -hmm. uh, I wanted to check and see if that seems like it lands <laughs> for you. <laughs> and, uh... Maybe like a shyness or something like that. Thank you. <laughs> Do you feel a shyness? I feel a nervousness. Mm -hmm. You feel it in your face? Or where do you feel it? It's like when I said it, it was this wave of heat that came from my arms and up my back and up in the back of my head. Mm -hmm. And you still feel the nervousness now? <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. It's a little bit there. There's more of this like radiating heat feeling. Mm -hmm. But is it like pleasant in a way? or is it unpleasant for you? I think it's pleasant to be aware of it and sometimes when I'm really warm I feel my heartbeat goes faster and that I have the thought that it's not pleasant mm -hmm. but right now I didn't think whether it was pleasant or not. But I think it's like reassuring to know that I can feel that and feel exactly where it is and be that much in touch. And I don't have to make believe that maybe that tiny sensation is how it was, but is like very clear what the sensation is. Mm. So you're like categorizing the sensation? As a clear sensation? Or? Yeah. It seems like um, you're like maybe the, the sensation to you seemed maybe not so clear or there was story and now maybe there's like clarity around what this the sensation means is that what you were saying no mm -hmm. the sensation doesn't mean anything it just is mm -hmm. and i'm experiencing gratefulness for being so in touch because in the past i wouldn't have like that clear where in my body is that sensation mm -hmm. And that's what I'm appreciating. Okay. So it's in the category. Is it in the category or is it just realizing my awareness is greater now? Hmm, I don't know. I think what I experience is just like the appreciation of being able to like be sensitive to something that maybe you wouldn't have been sensitive before to. Mm -hmm. So what did you mean by category? Mm, I thought that I heard you say something about the, like, that it's become clear what the sensation means, and so I thought maybe you, like, wrapped it up in a little box and put a bow on it and said this is how it is. 
I understand it now. enjoying looking in your eyes and it feels so calming and holding your hands is really warm and just noticing that a lot of the time when I'm in a one-on-one -on -one circle my tendency is to just sort of melt into the other person and like less thoughts come to my mind and it takes more effort to try and communicate something because I just don't care about communicating as much but wanting to like have some flow of communication for people to like be engaged for the video. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And noticing thoughts of like all the other videos I've done have been with experienced circlers and so I feel like they can really like pick up and start things whenever <laughs> I'm not. Mm -hmm. How does that feel to hear? Um, when you ask, I felt a little, I don't know if it's a tension, it's just like my muscle flexing in my leg, mm -hmm. my right leg. And what it felt to hear, um, is really appreciating your honesty and you wanting to just open up and share that and some curiosity about that desire to entertain and like where do you feel it in your body Maybe mostly just in my head. Um, I don't know if there's a lot of tension. Mm -hmm. Maybe a little bit in my heart. Uh, feeling like I should provide something for people. Um, or like maybe it's like some testament to how good of a circler I am, if I can, like, keep noticing and saying things out loud. And yeah, I think maybe when I said that, like, I felt it in my heart a little bit. Kind of like a soft, it's very soft, but maybe just like a really slight pressure. And um. Can you imagine how would it feel if you knew that everybody already knows how good you are at circling? I can imagine it. I think maybe I have like a slight resistance to imagining it, imagining it too much. Like some part of me doesn't care if everyone thinks that I'm a great circler. At least not enough. Like maybe there's a tiny part of me who wants to be seen as a good circler, but I think most of me isn't concerned about it. Mm. What is is it concerned about? <laughs> it's not about being a good circler. Mm -hmm. something to do with like pleasing an audience and something to do with 
me just wanting to be better than like my previous versions. Mm-hmm. What would that look like? I noticed when you asked me that, I got like imagery of me puking. And I think just like a wave of like, uh, I just don't want to give a shit. And I just want to be okay with that. It's like I... Maybe some sense of like the, a better version of myself would just be to let go of all the pressure that I feel from everything. And just not care. I think some part of me is like holding on to like, <laughs> no, you have to care to be better. Like if you don't care, then you're not gonna be, <laughs> you're not gonna have any drive. Mm -hmm. And I think it, some part of me has an idea of what better looks like materially or mentally. Like, this is how you get better. You have to, like, achieve more. Where do you find peace? here and there in small pockets. I mean, the first word that came to my mind was nowhere. Mm -hmm. I noticed when you said, after I asked you a question, you found like thinking about puking. Mm -hmm. And like, at first, my energy was more like stern or just kind of like listening. And then, like right after you said it, it was like realizing that it, I could be taking it personally. Mm -hmm. Like my questions make you puke, like that doesn't, <laughs> yeah. doesn't feel so good. But then there is this movement that I felt of energy of just like absorbing whatever you said like through my forehead inside of me, like that whole wave. Mm -hmm. And that felt like the opposite of like trying to reject it or like not be affected, but like by blocking it. Mm -hmm. It was like, okay, I'll let it in, like how is it? And how is it right now? It's it feels tender. Mm -hmm. it feels still really warm, mm -hmm. but there's a tenderness of. Um, I think of connection. Are there parts of your body that don't feel that tenderness? Like maybe some exiled parts that are like maybe want a little bit of attention outside of the tenderness? It's like my whole body is like all really warm mm -hmm. and then in the middle of it, the whole middle is like this where the tenderness came. Mm -hmm. I notice some tension in my left shoulder blade and I'm like wanting to stretch but also want to keep holding your hands. Mm -hmm. So maybe that part wants attention and is like a little rebel. <laughs> is that like the, the sort of flavor that comes up for you is like rebellious when you go into your left shoulder blade or is there something else that comes up? Maybe I would feel like I'm a rebel if I start just stretching while we're circling. Mm -hmm. Like I'm 
not like adequate. What's not adequate? To stretch during circling mm -hmm. instead of just staying still and hold your hands and look in your eyes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Is that your question? Mm -hmm. answer? Yeah. Does the inadequacy feel like it's related to your shoulder? Or not really? It's a separate thing. <laughs> I think it's uh, it's kind of a desire to respect the practice because mm -hmm. I find myself oftentimes like wanting to stretch in like places where I'm supposed to be mindful or something. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Some part of me <laughs> is wanting to tell you that you can like do anything you want and that's like respecting the practice. Uh, and like maybe it seems like the practice is supposed to be one way just because of my own sort of like persona or something. But then there was also a part of me that didn't want to tell you that. Uh, because I felt like we could go deeper into like insecurities if I didn't mention that. If you didn't reassure me? Uh huh. There was like a part of me that didn't want to reassure you or to like tell you about it. Because then maybe we'd like miss some opportunity to be with something that we could have been with. <laughs> Yeah. Mm -hmm. How does it feel? It feels good to say. Like it feels like it cleared my head. Um, to say that. And yeah, I think there's still some part that wants to be in more like drama or something. Yeah. Or more like trauma or just like insecurity, like something that most people would see as like a negative blockage that we could work with. Mm -hmm. And I noticed that's like a big theme for me, and I think probably for a lot of circlers especially when I'm filming it and like I'm trying to make the circle good or something like that. It's like there's got to be some hardship, there's got to be some like heavy emotion or else it's just not going to be worth watching. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes we think that about our lives. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it felt good to hear you say that. <laughs> yeah. I've had that where, like, if it's all going really, really well, I know it's going to crash. Mm -hmm. I just know it, because it can't be that good, like, it has to balance out. And I've had like a lot of experiences where it confirmed that belief or like that funny thought and it's like coming out of that, I don't know, I don't know, maybe it's doing the exercises with imagining the worst that could happen and like living it before it actually happens to liberate myself from it. But I would like, in the past, I would just make it crash and be like, I just had to. Mm -hmm. I couldn't control it. It was just too good. I had to make it be a drama. Or, mm -hmm. you know? Do you feel like you're somewhere on that 
like spectrum right now. It's like things are either really good and about to crash or things are maybe you're craving trauma or do you feel like you're just kind of good right now? Where you think mm. you're at? I feel really good. I feel like in my life there's not a lot of drama and there has been in the last few months some drama and uh, it's like resolved I feel like mm -hmm. and I'm not sure maybe the there is a desire for more drama. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <sighs> but like, it doesn't need to be a negative drama. It's like for more like, crazy emotions. I mm -hmm. think. And I actually have that Thought, I've had that thought many times, or like a few times at least, to start writing poetry, because it always inspires me to like feel a drama kind of, kind of like live vicariously through my poetry. But I've been kind of afraid because I know I'd probably share it with you, and then <laughs> you would like think I'm really crazy, uh -huh. and like it, we wouldn't know, I wouldn't even know what is the reality of my feelings for you or like mm -hmm. where is the line but I just really love playing that yeah line, like that role so <laughs> there's a fear of like maybe sharing certain things because maybe you don't know how I'll react or how I'll feel or how, maybe even how like you'll feel it's like more like I fear that you'll get the wrong idea about who I am. Mm -hmm. But if you never experience that part of me, then you're still getting the wrong idea. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maybe it's also like, I think the fear that I'll believe myself and I'll become that persona for a while and then mm -hmm. I'll like, won't, um, won't be attractive to you, like, mm -hmm. that, maybe. And you want me to be attracted to you? <sighs> um, I don't want... I want you to, like, force it, though. Mm -hmm. And you want me to be attracted to you? I guess I do. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's just hard to imagine, like, how can I want anything? It, it just is. Yeah. Yeah. And, like, if you weren't attracted to me, I, would, I wouldn't want you to be attracted to me. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think I feel the same way. And I also noticed a thing come up for me where sometimes I'll share desires and feel like I put an idea of who I am into people's heads and be like, that desire was only like a fraction of a truth. Like, I don't even know if I actually believe it. And now they like think that I'm this way and, and I don't even know what way I am. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That really resonates with me a lot, especially with even when I'm like angry or frustrated or I say things that are mean. Mm -hmm. I'm like, this is only like I don't even fully believe myself yeah, right now, exactly. <laughs> but I'm doing it. And then like, I guess maybe that's why I felt hurt when you said that I was doing a lot of projection because I was like, yeah, like a part of me is doing that. Okay, mm -hmm. but like. Wait, maybe there was a fear that you considered that, like, I fully believed myself in it? Well, I think even when I say it, there's not even a lot of care. It's like, oh yeah, I noticed that you're, like, projecting there. Like, I'm glad that you're 
letting out what feels good. I don't really care that you're projecting. <laughs> Just thought I'd mention it. Mm. But you also weren't really projecting onto me. I think that helps <laughs> me be neutral. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I feel like I just kind of, like, took us away from something. How? Well, now? Yeah. And, like, I was wanting to say more. And I was like, no, I'm kind of going into something that doesn't feel alive in the moment for me right now. Or, like, I'm losing track of kind of what's happening for me. I just like talking about something in my head. Mm -hmm. I'm just wondering what's the solution about wanting someone to know all my facets but not think that I'm either and just like yeah. trust, trust that they won't like assume like it's mostly that, right? Mm -hmm. I think maybe a strong desire, especially in relationship for me, is for two people to just have an understanding that we're just kind of saying things because it's like enjoyable or feels like it just wants to be said, mm -hmm. but not necessarily like, like, okay, that's the way it is now. It's like, oh yeah, they're expressing themselves. Yeah. And it can change at any moment, uh -huh. is that what you mean? Yeah. Like saying I want to have babies with you? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How did it feel to say that? This is good. Mm-hmm. It was still true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's like that saying it as I mean, it also feels, um, good to be seen, to say that in a video, mm -hmm. yeah, but when we say it, we say it like, now I want it, in the future. Mm-hmm, <laughs> yeah, even when we're talking about future things, it's kind of our wants right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it felt good to hear you say that, like the idea of having babies. I think it felt like warm and opened up my heart a little bit. And I felt my penis for the first time uh, since we've been circling. It's kind of like tingle and activate or something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can definitely feel some sensations when I pussy when you say that. Mm -hmm. But it's more like the just more like it being there. It's not fully turned on. Yeah. But it's like, oh yeah, there's also this part of my body that's in the heat. <laughs> Yeah, but it wasn't in a sexual way. Mm -hmm. Like for me, when I said that, I imagined more like I want to have a family with you. I imagine like us older and having kids mm -hmm. as like a status. So it was more intellectual than like yeah. Oh, I want to have babies. Like we yeah. to make babies. <laughs> sharing that, like that it's more intellectual. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm like trying to come up with a reason why I like that. I think maybe it just feels good to hear you say that because it feels like I have more like room to say things like that about my thoughts. I'm like, yeah, it's just like intellectual status. <laughs> I mean, maybe not just, but like a lot of it. Mm-hmm. And how does that feel? To say it? Or like the idea of intellectual status. 
think it usually feels fun to play with and like yeah mostly just a fun idea that like I could have these things I don't think I ever get too attached to it mm -hmm. but yeah it seems like a playful thing that I can like use on earth <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah I guess like if something were to change that's where like I don't know how to like how to play if one of my characters is not able to express that mm -hmm. and then it's like well um, cause you say everything we say is like right now but there are things that we say often enough like if we say it every day then it's like maybe if we don't say it for a week it's mm -hmm. still gonna be there is there something that you feel like you're not I don't know able to or like feel safe enough to express right now well it's if we're talking about just having children if we're like I think, I think maybe I'm like wanting more of like the emotion that you're feeling right now and... Well, it's kind of like that pinch in my heart of like imagining that fear that I would be... I would spend a week not saying but thinking that you also want to have children <laughs> and then a week later you're like, no, that was like two weeks ago. <laughs> now I just want to be with you and not have children or... <laughs> Something like something like that. Is that what you're uh, wanting to hear? You think? I noticed that it felt good to hear you talk about it. Um, mm -hmm. I also like that you kind of put that there was sort of like a pinch in your heart, or maybe you feel a pinch in your heart thinking about that or something. Yeah, it is very light, mm -hmm. but it was like that idea. It was like. Mm. That could happen. Yeah. I think I still have that fear. If we we're going to talk about fear. Yeah. And like, I'm learning to trust you, but I feel kind of a pressure in my in the middle of my chest when I think deeply about that fear that like we'll decide to have children and I'll be pregnant and then you'll tell me that you don't want to have children anymore uh -huh. once I'm pregnant and maybe it'll be like either too late for an abortion or I'll just won't want to have an abortion and then it's like how do I want to live my life is it like thinking that I'll only have children if I'm ready to raise them alone or just like really trusting in someone else that I know that's what they want and they're not gonna let me down mm -hmm. or like yeah yeah I think the the part where you said how do I want to live my life kind of stuck with me I think it's stuck with me because it's something that I feel like I can grab onto and like put in the moment and there's like curiosity if you have that right now like how do I want to live my life is that a worry for you right now um, even without thoughts of babies yeah it is it's always like this back and forth of like how independent do I decide to be? Or how interdependent? Or like, do I let myself go into codependence? And do, like, mm -hmm. I want that? Or, like, maybe I try to calculate within myself. But you know what hurts me? Like, what I make, what like, I hurt myself with is like the thought that I'm like, all right, I'm already all right, yeah. and I can just 
go away like I told you about that before or I can just like cut the strings and I'm like that really hurts me because I don't want to close my heart and cut the strings like I don't mm. want to and I'm wanting to let my heart love like fully and even if something goes wrong I can like instead of blocking everything I can just let everything out and let everything be but I don't even know how that looks like mm -hmm. but I just don't want to have that thought anymore that I can just cut off everything because that's like my securing thought yeah I noticed that that's probably also my like secure like security thought mm -hmm. yeah I think it brings me some comfort too that even if you left and I don't know my life just starts going downhill that I can just like really not care or something and close your heart I don't know I, I, maybe it feels a little different for me and maybe like maybe not caring was the wrong word mm -hmm. um, but just that I could be okay and how is that thought? like is it? yeah I think for me it feels more of like a warm nurturing thought I was really contemplating the idea of whether I'm like using it as a defense or something or like some sort of preparation for if it happened then I can just like use that and not feel my feelings but I don't know if I really get a lot of that I think that I'd be able to feel my feelings and that I could hurt and possibly grieve or something in a healthy way and that would still be okay. I feel open to like all the possibilities and the emotions and like the heartache that comes with it all. So is it a pleasant thought? Yeah, I think it is more pleasant for me. Does it, because I have that thought too, which is like better, it's like more, it feels better to have mm -hmm. that thought and like I have it more often than the thought I can just like shut up everything mm -hmm. and I'm like no I can just go and cry for like however long I need to and it'll be great for like my emotional release practice mm -hmm. <laughs> and like and I'm like I've already done this I've already felt so good alone in this sorrow that I know this place and I'm like happy to be with it yeah so it's there too but I don't know if it's so much of a pleasant thought but it's more neutral mm. yeah <laughs> I think sometimes I worry and even today you were on like a call for a while and I was just kind of laying outside uh, meditating and thinking and it's like sometimes I worry that I can be like too neutral or too detached or something and not yeah I don't know question what I want maybe and a little bit ago I had this thought just like 10 minutes ago when you were talking of me just like well I felt this like energy kind of or in my gut area like this sort of almost demonic dark energy that just wanted to come out of me and I think because like I don't think that I want to know what I want <laughs> that makes sense I don't care about knowing what I want but it's like sometimes I feel like I have to force myself to try and know what I want uh, for either other people usually I think for other people and so I just had this imagery of like this dark thing coming out of me and just like eating you and I think it represented like 
merging with you, but also not having to deal with the pressure that comes with being with you. How does that feel? It feels crystalline and true and a little bit like walking on a string. Mm. But like it's a it's actually I love being heights. So it's not like the fear of people who don't like that. It's like, oh, I'm like up there right now. Yeah. Walking up there. Um, like so you're walking on a string. Like what is that? What are the feelings that come with that? And why are you on the string? Mm. Because it's like that stream of thought, it's kind of like I'm walking on top of it, like... Mm -hmm. Because I'm following it, mm -hmm. and... I'm not, I'm not letting it like crush me down either. Mm -hmm. I'm just like, okay, let's surf this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so to me it seems like walking on the string is representing more of like an excited flow or something. And maybe, I mm -hmm. think at first I thought maybe it was like caution, like okay, I have to be careful how I step. I have to try not to like pressure high it or something. That's mm -hmm. how I took it at first. Well, it would, it would have been like, I have to be cautious of like where my thoughts are going to go right now. Mm -hmm. That was like this like total concentration, like the only thing I need to worry about is the next step. Cautious because maybe you'd have to say it if they came into your head? Or why cautious about that? The thoughts? Because... Um, I think because I could easily go into stories and like victimhood or whatever mm -hmm. possibilities of stuff but I was like no this is like not about that and didn't come to my mind it was just like this crystalline like truth you shared and like being in this space with it and that's what I wanted mm -hmm. <sighs> and I'm also curious to understand more and also I remind myself that like whatever pressure anyone has it's like what they put on themselves right? yeah. and so where where does it come from? Yeah I think you mentioning that I got some tingles and like this <laughs> belief that I'm sure that I have that in order to like keep somebody in my life there has to be some sort of pressure uh, or like romantically anyways I think more so romantically like if there's I don't know why what do you mean by pressure? Like I imagine there's just gonna be desires that aren't like always the same or maybe there's like the pressure of I want to do this so that way I can keep your affection and your desire or mm. um, even if it's just small things because that's all I've really experienced so far it's not like big pressure I think for the most part I really love all of our like big ideas and they all feel really good to me but just like pressure of oh i kind of want to get out in the out of bed in the morning and maybe stretch and meditate but mm, like there's maybe a tiny pressure for me to stay in bed and cuddle with you and 
maybe do like some practices with you whenever you're ready before I get out of bed. So like small things like that. You call it pressure. Mm, yeah, like a small pressure that I put on myself. And so if that is pressure, what is a compromise? Mm, I don't know. I think it would take me a little bit, and I don't know if I even feel like... Because it just sounds like a compromise to me. Uh-huh. Like I'm going to say, like, my truth. Yeah. Mm. I imagine it could be considered a compromise. Because I think there's also an uncertainty of, like, what I actually want. Because I think more of me does want to just stay in bed and cuddle with you than to go out and, like, get up in the morning. Um, and that's why I'm doing it. So, it's like, whether you were there or not, I imagine there's always compromise with myself in that way. Like, being pulled so many different ways by different desires, and it's like, well, which one do I want more? So, I might be compromising, but even if I got out of bed and went and meditated, I'd still be compromising and, like, curious about what it would have been like to just stay with you and cuddle more and be in your embrace. Mm -hmm. So I notice that compromise hardly has like any meaning in my head. Do you like feeling pressure? Mm, there's definitely certain times when I like feeling pressure. Probably not always. But I think pressure is helpful in a lot of ways and pleasurable in a lot of ways. And like, mentally and emotionally stimulating. Would it feel better for you if every time you did something you were 100% sure that's what you wanted and you didn't have to imagine what it would have been like if you did something different? <clears throat> I mean, it seems like when I'm the most peaceful is whenever I'm just like doing something with certainty and don't care about like thoughts of missing out or maybe a thought will come in where it's like, I'm missing out, but I'm not really attached to that thought. Mm-hmm. Like the joy of missing out, have you heard mm -hmm. of yeah, that? Yeah, the joy of missing out, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that seems like uh, when I feel the most peaceful is when I have that joy of missing out. Mm. It feels really relaxed and grounding to hear that. <sighs> I think for me the fear that comes with uh, doing compromises for like morning practices or things like that is the fear that like I'll do like I've done in the past where I'll like totally forget myself in a relationship and then end up like breaking up with them to like find myself again. Mm -hmm. And like, I don't know what's the limit, like what's the line. Yeah, I, f I resonate with that too. <laughs> it's like, I don't know what the line is. I feel pretty sure that like even when I have these thoughts and express certain things of like wanting to, I don't know, go off by myself, like those are just things that want to be expressed but it feels truer that I want to keep being in a relationship with you. And just like, I want to be in a relationship with you and be able to express like that I want to go off and be alone 
even if it's like not like just expressing it I think helps me to want to stay with you more mm -hmm. just like being able to have the space from you to express that I'm not sure I'm not sure what I want I'm not sure like whether I'm gonna want to be with you or whether I'm gonna want to like go spend a year or two at Vipassana and just like <laughs> meditate or like go off to some mountain. Just being able to express all these ideas that come into my head with you helps me like get them out of my head and thinking about them and just kind of like grounds me more into that being with you. How does it feel to share that? Um, felt relieving and I noticed like visuals starting to change and with my eyesight um, like kind of morphing and also I think maybe the dimness the light becoming dimmer has a little bit to do with it but it just felt like I was kind of sinking into you more I receive you how is it to receive me? Really good. I could actually imagine being you and like saying that. Yeah. And like all the worries that could come with that. With those thoughts and ideas and possible life paths and um and I think I feel also a lot like you about wanting to be able to express like desires mm -hmm. without fully doing them like yeah. if i see a beautiful girl and i really want to have sex with her like just be like i just want to fuck this girl but know that like i'm not gonna do it yeah and like yeah something like that mm -hmm. yeah i think that's what i've appreciated most about this circle is like feeling like i can imagine myself being you and what you're saying and like okay cool like she has basically a lot of the same thoughts and ideas and like <laughs> <laughs> contemplations as it seems like i do mm. and that is that relieving yeah it's relieving yeah it's kind of like in a way oh relieving i can relax but at the same time it's like Wow, this is a rabbit hole. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> and there's like a lot to be shared and I think every time we have a difference about something that we feel, um, it kind of, for me, brings me closer to myself and to like, what's the difference and like all the variety of, of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just like slightly spacing out there and not fully hearing everything you said like I well I also kind of spaced <laughs> out and I was thinking about when you said like are you too neutral or too like independent mm -hmm. when you were like just lying in the sun while I was having my call mm -hmm. and I was just thinking about that for example and thinking like it could have been me doing that and wondering yeah that same thing <laughs> Yeah. Which I feel like I felt more like that at the beginning when you first arrived here. I'd be like so used to doing my whole like alone routine that I like really didn't want you to feel like you came here for nothing. Mm -hmm. And so it was like um, You're trying to maybe like accommodate me a little bit or something? Yeah. But maybe I made myself believe that and I just wanted to spend a lot of time with you. <laughs> <laughs> that kind of sounds more true. Because mm -hmm. I was like, I kept thinking in my head, like, I'm worried about that. <laughs> but it was like so full of love. It was not like, 
um, worried he's gonna think I'm not a good friend because I like uh -huh. didn't do anything to him, but it was more like this urge to like give you a lot of love. Mm -hmm. At the same time, I was like, I really want to keep doing all my crying and emotional release and mind map and practices. And how do you feel talking right now? I feel good. Yeah. I feel relaxed, and I feel like on a whim. Is that the expression? Like whimsical or something. Like yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's like, I feel like at the end I can actually tell you what was there that I wasn't fully realizing. Yeah. And like I know some of the stuff I've been wanting to do I haven't, but then I started doing other stuff that I've also been wanting to do yeah. for a while. <laughs> and then I'm like, well, it's all like, it's all gonna kind of balance out, I think. Mm -hmm. What do you think? I, you stimulated, like, I remember having a thought while I was laying down earlier, and I'm trying to remember it. Um, just like, yeah, I had thoughts of, like, oh, well, if I was alone right now, I could be doing maybe, like, more self-practices and then I was like but actually if I was alone I wouldn't even be doing like fasting most likely um, so I just had this thought that being with you is actually more motivating for me to do the things that I want to do alone that I just feel like I don't have I guess enough uh, desire or something to do when I'm alone. And I guess I just think like, oh, it'd be easier if I was alone to do this because I wouldn't have to worry about anyone else's like energy around me. But I'm like, it's only because your energy was around me that I'm doing a lot of these things anyways. You were thinking about that? Mm-hmm. Mm. It was kind of like, I was just contemplating like the more I feel like I'm sort of merging with you, the more I feel like I'm doing the things I want as an individual. Mm, like the deepest. Things. Yeah, like the deepest <laughs> <laughs> desires. Yeah, like the hardest. Mm -hmm. Cause then you have help. Yeah, and just kind of realizing that, yeah, it's really hard for me to do anything that I deeply desire without other people. Yeah. How is it to say that? Hmm. It feels nice. It also feels like I talked for a little bit and I keep having thoughts of wondering if we feel good and if we should end the video has been coming up. Okay. How are you feeling? I don't really mind if we keep going the video longer. Yeah. Do you have anything that's happening for you? I think like it kind of buckled the loop, or how do you say that? Like closed the loop. Mm -hmm. When you said that, like in the end, you get more motivation from doing things with other people. Mm -hmm. Because. I've been trying to be get away from that because I relied on that so much. Even in school, I couldn't practice alone at some point because I, was, I had no energy because I was like detoxing a lot. Yeah. The only way I could practice is if I was practicing with other people, and I used that a lot. Yeah. And it felt really good because like jam is playing with other people, so it's actually even better that way. Mm -hmm. But I also in the last year or two or even like few months been like even more centered on myself and being able to do it all by myself and like 
actually since last March, since being alone and starting my YouTube channel alone and like starting everything alone that I deeply wanted to, I'm like, I had to be alone to like finally do it, but I already wanted to do it with other people and it like didn't work. So it's like my desire first was to do it with other people. And then I was like, well, if nobody wants to do it with me, I can do it alone. <laughs> and that felt really powerful to start doing that. And it was, I was so passionate with myself. Mm -hmm. And it's like the only thing I had. Because I didn't have anyone to like hang out with for a couple months. Mm -hmm. And even lately. So like when you say that, it's like that vulnerability for me to like admit that I just prefer doing everything with someone else and it's like hard to admit because I know I can do it all alone too. Mm. <sighs> how does how does that feel to like do things all alone? When I do it or just the thought of that? I think just the it? thought of that right now in the moment. It feels like, I don't know, when I said that at the end, like all of this togetherness of all those thoughts felt like stuck. It was like this point where it was like, oh, it's like something I feel stuck with. Mm. Do you feel it now? Or do you feel like you kind of let go of it? Or how is it? It's kind of still there. It's like... Maybe that's the pressure that you talk talk about, but I feel it as being stuck. Mm -hmm. Where it's like, I don't know how much I wanna like, force myself to be alone if I can just spend all my time with you. <laughs> <laughs> but I also know that whenever we spend time apart, it's like, it's also great. Yeah. It's not forced. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know what you think about it. I feel like if I could, if I could like really tap into it, into like that desire, I could cry. The desire for what? Like to admit that I ultimately don't care if I need to spend any time alone if I'm still going to be fulfilled spending all my time with you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I've, I've been spending like most of my time with you. I think probably the past, I don't even know how long, maybe two weeks or so. Um, and when I do have time, on my own, maybe just like even if it's 30 minutes to an hour, it's like almost orgasmic <laughs> for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, just to be able to either meditate like and calm my thoughts or just like let my thoughts go and contemplate things that, I don't know, feel like almost a deeper core part of my being than maybe I contemplate when I'm with you. Maybe because I just have more like fun and distraction and like loveliness mm. when I'm with you. And so like my, I notice that my mind is, it's easier for my mind to go like to other places when I'm alone, which can feel really good for me. Mm -hmm. Is it, do you realize that you'd want to have that more? I think that is a feeling that's been coming up for me, is like, if I could just have like an hour or maybe two, maybe not even every day, but maybe like close to every day, then mm -hmm. it would feel like probably really good for me. I think maybe that's some of the pressure that I've been putting on myself. Mm -hmm. 
it's maybe a desire to like be off on my own, especially because we've got other friends here. And so a lot of the time, even when I'm not with you, like I'll go out and then I'll spend my time like talking with Rob or something. And even in that, like it feels good to interact with Rob. But I'm also like, uh, like I'm having like no alone time. <laughs> Mm. Yeah, I think one of us is going to have to be stronger. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like if neither of us like puts effort into doing it or something, we'll just keep like being with each other or something, is that what you're saying? Yeah, but, it, but I, I know that it balances out naturally yeah. and I'm not worried. I'm not worried either. <laughs> I think the only worry is like maybe announcing it to you or something and then feeling like there's like like it can bring some sort of disconnect or something in in the moment. I know what you mean because I know like a defense mechanism mechanism would be like Oh yeah, you don't want to spend all your time with me. That's okay. I don't need yeah. you at all. <laughs> uh -huh. Like nothing at all, right? But then this other thought is like actually that kind of would serve me, so I could like do more of maybe my music or my art, or like hmm. maybe the music creation is something. I can't really do with you, like I feel like meditation I can do with you, mm -hmm. I like pretty much anything, but like even if we were to do writing, we could just do it together and help each other be like, okay, well now we're going to do this. Yeah. But like, if we were to put in music, I think that would be different, unless we worked on a song together, but I think there's some, there's like, making my own songs that I really like doing mm -hmm. and uh, you could be making your own songs at the same time yeah I noticed like some part of me the circling part of me that's like this urgency to be like okay we're talking too much about like ideas and stories and like things that <laughs> feel like you could take us away from the essence of circling and how I see it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And how does that feel? I think it feels, there's definitely a part that feels good to say it, like, um, I think I used to say things like that a lot more in circling, like almost more of an aggressive circler, and I think I just like tend to not care as much anymore. <laughs> But I think there's a part of me that really enjoys like being aggressive and like cutting people off and be like, you know, we gotta bring it back. Well, when I think about doing all these things, and even when I think about doing my music, it's kind of like it has a little bit of this feeling that I'm not enough to just like. I want to just be alone and do nothing. I just don't really fully understand, like... You're not enough? Yeah. Like, maybe you're not being productive enough, or you're not... What's not enough? To... Um, I'm not enough to just want to do nothing for two hours and be alone and do nothing. Or meditate, or like, something like that. And then I'm like, well, I don't want to imagine being bored or something. So I know I have like a lot of things I want to do. Yeah. Alone. Is there some sense that you feel like you should be able to like do nothing for two mm -hmm. hours? Yeah. And the feeling of not enough is from like thinking that you don't have it in you or something to do that and be okay with it. 
maybe or what comes for me is more not really answering your question but it's like I imagine that you could do that and I think that if I can't do something you can do then I'm not good enough for mm -hmm. you yeah I feel like that's something that has resonated a lot with me in the past and probably a little bit now too but maybe I don't feel it so much but even just like making music like oh I'm not really much of a musician and like if that's not something that I can do with you then maybe you'll find other people to do it with and there's like that sense of not being enough for what you want mm -hmm. but that's a little different because it's about other people mm -hmm. like I don't think you but maybe I would think that you'll find someone else who's like so happy alone and can do nothing for hours and then you'll be like good I want to be with you so that we can both do nothing separately uh -huh. like it's kind of it's twisted when I actually say it <laughs> yeah I think saying it is Believing that fear for me without worrying. Yeah, I think I, if I'm being honest, like in this moment when you're doing music by yourself, or I think you've only really done it maybe once where you were like trying to create some music, but it felt relieving. Like, okay, cool, music can take care of her and I can like just be with myself while she's doing music and it feels good. <laughs> mm. Interesting. Because I've had a long story of like having to practice minimum four hours a day or doing like ten hours a day sometimes. Yeah. And like all this musician talk about wanting our partners to like understand that we don't have a lot of time or like that a lot of our time is just like playing music so that kind of like reminded me of that for some reason but when you said that I don't know if it's relieving for you but it kind of feels like uh, like offended Mm -hmm. kind of feel yeah. Why is that? <laughs> because like if you wanted to have space like I could be alone and decide what I wanna do and it might not be music, it might be movement, it might be like just taking a nap or doing my meditation as well, I mean. Mm -hmm. I could want to do that too. Yeah, so is it like feeling offended because maybe I like waited for you to do something? Instead of just be like more assertive and be like I'm gonna go and I want to be with myself now or something? What was offensive about that? Because it's kind of like saying the thing that I'm saying that I'm not good enough for you if I can't just be by myself and not be entertained. Mm -hmm. And it's like what you were thinking about, like what you think of me is that maybe? Oh, yeah. I guess I used music because that was just the thing that came up recently, but it would be the same like if you were doing another practice, like emotional work or meditation but like you said I feel like if you're meditating I could feel probably just as good meditating with you like I don't know if I would need like my own individual space to mm. meditate if you're meditating also yeah I'm feeling some pull to 
in the video. Mm-hmm. Okay. 